This is a 43 years old female who presented with complaints of apprehension for the past four hours. Looking at the ECG, what we need to see is grossly, is it a sinus rhythm? Is there any issue with the ST segments or the QRS complexes and other intervals also? So if we give a look to this ECG, we can see there are some changes going on. So what are we seeing in this ECG are the changes in few leads, which includes the inferior leads, namely lead 2, lead 3 and lead AVF. We can also see some changes in lead AVR. And again, we can see that there are changes in anterior chest leads so this is a kind of an involvement which is involving a lot of leads so now let's focus our findings to inferior leads so what we can see is there are loss of r waves in inferior leads as seen over here and with the arrows marked and with the loss of R wave, we can see there is a negative deflection suggesting a Q wave is being formed. And in addition, there are ST elevations in lead 2, lead 3 and lead AVF as well. So this means that this lady was having some kind of involvement of the myocardium in the form of myocardial infarction. In addition, we can also ch see changes in lead V5, lead V6 with the formation of Q waves in lead V5 and V6 and there is obvious ST elevation in them. So, the findings are the elevations are present in lead 2 and lead 3 and lead AVF along with the lateral leads. However, we cannot see elevations in lead AVL and lead limb lead 1 also seems to be isoelectric with no ST elevation. So what does this suggest? This suggests that this lady is having inferior wall myocardial infarction and the lateral wall is also involved. So now are there any other pathology which we can see? Yes, we can see that there are changes in the lead V1 and V2 as well. So as we know that the inferior wall is linked to few other things which includes a posterior wall infarction as well. So we'll see in further slides if it's a possibility or not. So this lady is obviously having changes in the inferior and lateral wall suggesting infralateral wall MI. And the question arises whether she is having posterior wall MI or not. So for a posterior wall MI we need to look for few things. The features of posterior MI includes there are R waves which are seen in lead V1 and V2 and there are ST depressions which are isolated to anterior leads especially horizontal in character and they are associated with upright T waves and finally if we apply the posterior leads so we can see a 0.5 mm or more ST elevations in that posterior leads. So now let's look at our patient. So we can see R waves over here, but they don't seem to be too tall R waves. And there is deep S. So this R wave is not too tall to suggest that this is posterior wall involvement. However, we can see ST depressions over here and they are horizontal. We can appreciate these horizontal depressions. 
followed by an upright T waves. So this criteria is met. So now what's the interesting point in this ECG is because it's as we know that the MI goes into evolution from few changes to other changes. So it's not mandatory that we find all the changes every time. So this was a posterior wall MI being progressed as well and that's why the R waves were getting taller and so we could not see that these R waves are uh, tall because they were progressing. So with the passage of time this R waves get tall and then a classical criteria will be met. So don't be confused when all the criteria are not met always do the serial ECGs and look for the complete evolution of these changes. So the inferior wall MI can be caused by two different lians. So it can be either involving the right coronary artery that is commonly seen but sometimes when the left circumflex is also dominant means that the left circumflex artery is giving the PDA then the inferior wall MI can be caused by that. So this can cause a clinical dilemma regarding the management because we need to open up the artery. So inferior wall MI you have to have an idea about the type of artery which can cause this inferior wall MI. So what are the features that support right coronary artery as a culprit and the features that favors left circumflex. So let's study them. For a right coronary artery, there should be ST elevations in lead 3 more than lead 2. There should be presence of reciprocal ST depressions in lead 1. And when we apply the right sided chest leads, then we can see an ST elevation in B4R. And with, with the hint of ST elevation in B1 with the normally placed leads. So whenever we see an ST elevation in B1 along with the inferior wall MI in normally placed leads go for right sided leads and if the V4 of the right sided lead is elevated then it is highly specific for right sided involvement and as we can see that the right ventricular the branches for the right ventricle arises from the right coronary artery so this supports that the right coronary artery is the culprit. In the case of left circumflex, the ST elevations in lead 3 will be equal to lead 2, but not more than lead 2. However, lead 2 elevations can be more than lead 3. So this is opposite kind of in the case of right coronary artery. There will be absence of ST depressions in lead 1. And there will be ST elevation in lateral leads 1, AVL or B5 and B6. Now let's apply this criteria to our ECG. So can this be a right sided artery that is culprit? Let's look at this. ST elevation in lead 3 more than lead 2. So we cannot see that lead 3 elevation is more than lead 2. So this is not criteria that is being met. Reciprocal ST depressions in lead 1. We cannot see anything below the line. Isoelectric line. So this can't be a depression. And since uh, we have not applied uh, the right ventricle leads because we cannot see an ST elevation in V1. So the right sided artery seems unlikely to be the culprit. Now let's go look at circumflex. So now we can see that the ST elevation kinds of matches in lead 3 and lead 2 here and here. And there is absence of reciprocal ST depression in lead 1 and there are ST elevations in lead AVL uh, or V5 or V6. So we can see in V5 and V6 there are obvious ST elevation however there is no ST elevation in AVL. But in this case majority of criteria are being met in the case of left circumflex. So these are the criteria which need to be applied. You should be thinking in your mind for evaluating the arteries as the cause of this MI. So summarizing the information, the pearls are that whenever you encounter an inferior wall MI, look for a few things including 
ST elevation in the lead 2 and lead 3, you have to compare the elevations in both leads. The depressions, the ST depressions in the lateral lead, especially lead 1 and AVL, and the ST elevation in V5, V6. So, depending upon the amount of information, we can have an idea about the type of lien. Why it's important to identify the right corneal artery or the left circumflex is involved? There are a few reasons for that. First of all, you need to open the artery and some of the complications, then you have to look for these as well. So, some of the complications are more common in uh, infarct of the right corneal artery. So, what you can encounter with an RCA is you can see an AV blocks, you can see a sinus node dysfunction in the form of sinus bradycardia, and obviously you can have an RV infarct in the case of right corneal artery. So, their management bits of change in the management uh, can be seen when tackling these types of infarct. In the case of circumflex, the more common complications of MI can be seen, such, uh, for example, like heart failure. So, uh, the thing is that these localization are important in some aspects, but ultimately you have to look all the arteries, but this definitely helps you in identifying the culprit artery and also looking forward to the complications as well when you see such types of arteries being involved and you have to vary of these kinds of complications. Thank you very much.